Can you throw Cully Baron? Pretty strong considering she's really broken right now. <laughs> okay, you got to meet yourself. Uh, Alright. Sounds good. I mean, the Orn ban only fitting they ban Orn against the Forge God. <laughs> it's disrespectful if they don't. Yeah, so we have Thomas Nelson Esports Gaming on the left side, and then we have DuPont the other Manual. team on the right side. Yes, sir. DuPont Manual ban. comes into this game as the number one seed. And we are currently the number three seed. And this is also the semifinals. Actually, I think Lafayette's the number one seed right now. Oh, really? Yeah, they have a Masters Jungler. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, some pretty good bands on both sides, honestly. Echo, Zach, Orn, pretty strong. Carries, in my opinion. And same thing with Thomas Nelson, banning a Kali, LeBlanc, Kindred. Yeah, I've seen that, Ken that dude, their jungler play Kindred last game. That's not something you want to go up against. I mean, if Kindred does end up snowballing, it could be a scary game. Without a doubt. But we did end up locking in a scary pick ourselves for the jungler. AKA the Graves. Okay, Olaf, another good, strong early jungler. So the junglers sh shall be clashing pretty soon into the game. Do you think the Graves is better than Olaf pick here, or what do you think? How the two would compare? Oh, uh, dude, honestly, I feel like Graves is stronger right now. Mainly because. The item synergized really good with Graves, and just Graves, the champ itself, is just really strong. Plus, Olaf needs a, a solid time yeah. spent farming just to even become. I mean, Olaf will apply that early pressure, which yeah. is pretty scary, but at the same time, Graves can just apply that pressure as well. Okay, Diana, Garen, draw some pretty strong carries. They picked in the Jin. Pretty good, pretty right. good. Lethality Jin is a scary boy. Okay, so the so what happens? So you ban three on each side, and then you pick three, and then next we're gonna ban yeah. two champions, and then after that, each team will pick their two champions. Yes. Which makes them kind of strategize who they want to ban first. If they want to focus ban one first, it makes them choose a. A harder champ or whatever, one that they might not know is less uh, often used tactic. It, you know what? The Rise pick, honestly, is pretty good considering that Rise takes phase rush and can kite very well. In the right hands, that champion can be very scary and tough to deal with. Do you think Rise is going mid or top? Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going mid. <laughs> I've seen uh, there's a period where they're playing rise mid lane. I mean, not mid lane, top lane. Yeah, I mean, range scary. top lane is OP. Facts. Okay. Thresh, Jin in the bot lane. So, so Thresh is probably going to be their support, obviously. Of course. Ash, okay. Ash into Jin, that's actually really good. The only things that we have to look out for is that the Ash doesn't ult the Olaf because Olaf can just press ult and negate his CC or her CC. That would be terrible. Yeah. Olaf just eats the arrow, ults, and then it's just like, well, so much for the Ash ult. Pretty good bands on both sides again. Morgana, Darius, Leona, Swain. Yeah. Ooh, Waffle Ooh. Hunt using his main Nautilus. Ash, Leona, scary combo. Jace Top, a mechanically hard champ, but if good with him, also can be very scary. I'm pretty sure Jace should win lane into Garen, just because Jace can outpoke or outrange, poke him down, but at the same time have melee and a huge chunk of damage. This is about to be one. Really good game, but it's important for TNG not to lose the early game. If they lose the early game, it's going to be hard for them to catch back up. I mean, 
Thomas Nelson crafting up a beautiful team comp. For sure. Like, they survived the first 20 minutes of the game, and in my opinion, I say it's over. All righty. So we have less than 10 seconds until the game will start loading. Well, actually, actually, no, actually no, we, we had to wait. yeah, we had to wait five minutes. Awkwardness is they had to get ahead, so there isn't no cheating as reviewing this. So, I mean, Chief Sawyer, he's really comfortable on Diana. He's got a really good Diana. Oban, the Graves. Graves is a really strong champ into Rise because he can just perma gank mid, set him back, which is actually really nice. Ash Nautilus, well, there's nothing to say other than broken. <laughs> broken, for sure. Garen, I mean, it is Garen. He's going to grab some butter. And go to town. I'm interested to see this Jin four shot damage whenever we, if it does get in the late game, because Jin is, he can absolutely, like, one shot any of the squishies. I mean, such as Ash. That is true. I mean, Thomas Nelson, they have a pretty nice Wamba going in. They have Graves for the near sight, but what really makes their Wamba combo is Diana going in, ulting them together, Nautilus ulting their back line, Ash arrowing Jin or Rise. That would just be the icing on top of the cake. And then hands down, they'll win the team fight. For sure. If they're smart about it. Like, I know a lot of times... We get caught in some weird choke points where, like, one person goes in and they all don't follow the team. So communication is a huge part of not just this game, but every single game of League of Legends. Yeah, even blind picks. Oh, gosh, don't get me into blind picks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like DuPont's team, they have more of a, a pick comp going into this with the Jays, Thresh. They can actually pick off a lot of people. And then just in case, they have that rise for team fighting. But they don't really have too much of a front line besides Thresh, in my opinion. And Olaf, if he goes Tankloff. Tankloff, I like that. But yeah, the pink pick comp, I mean, the teams has to be utilizing the wards and as much vision around the map as possible. And just they so have... they can always have tabs on everybody. And they have to have really good coordination for pick comps. Isn't Rise's ultimate? <clears throat> Doesn't he? It teleports. Has, yeah, he teleports. It, yeah, it creates like a little circle, and anyone who stands in it gets teleported to a certain location of Rise's choosing within a range. Yeah, so they're going to have to watch that, like the shot calling, like telling where people are out of lane needs to be happening as soon as possible. So that Rise ult can go anywhere, and that person could be 1v3, and it's just over. Free gold. I've never seen Rise ult be used like this, but Rise could bait them, ult out of vision into them, but ult no one. And just get them scared. For sure. Okay, and we are now into the uh, It's switching over to the other client. Can you see it now? Not yet. It just says stream pause. So do you see minimize your application to type? Are you just screen sharing or? Give me a second though. Let me see if I can stream to the client. Oh, it doesn't let me. I I have to stream the actual game. For like my, I have to stream my screen. I got it. Okay, we got. Two Mastery 7s on the enemy team, and then we have Waffleheimer or Nautilus on his main with 142k points. Alrighty, and the game has officially mm -hmm. begun. So we have Thomas Nelson being the blue team and DuPont Manual being the red team. It's going to be interesting. We're going to. I'm curious to see how the bot lane matchup is going to go. I know that is uh, Thomas Nelson's one of their strongest sides is the chemistry between those two, and then even with their pick comp. 
So, so far, it's looking like DuPont Manual is going to the invade. They might be invading here. Wall so, farmer better be careful. He's got to look out for the Thresh Hook. Dodges it really oh, nicely. Barely, barely missed it. Yeah, but even then, Nautilus was throwing out a hook, so yep. he would have been able to get it. No summoner spells were used, so everything's yep. all good, and looks like DuPont's just going to go ahead and back and reset. They did get vision on Graves' red buff, so the mid laner and bot lane will know when to back off or when to play cautious. And just for the people watching who might not even have much knowledge about this game, uh, the enemy team cannot see like our team, and we can't see their team where they're at. But since we're spectating, we can see both sides. And what they're doing. Just a quick little heads up. As we watch the mid lane right here, the first waves are flashing right now. Yep, so right now we have just Rise. His main objective is to not lose lane, try to scale up, power farm. Because Rise really isn't a strong champion early game. He's just more of there for the late game. And then once he does hit late game, he does a lot of damage. We have... Yes, he does. It, late game rise is something to be scared of, and that's for sure. And here is our top lane matchup, a Garen against a Jace. Now, I wonder how Garen's going to do, because Jace can poke Garen out of lane, but yet again, Garen does have his sustain for passive, which is really nice. And we're going to take a look at bot lane here, how they're going. So again, there is the Ash Nautilus Wombo combo, which they have perfect synergy together. Probably one of the best kind of duos you can have in the bot lane. Right now. And the other team has Jin and Thresh. Again, another power duo to be reckoned with. And right now, uh, looks like we have backed off a little bit because they reached level two before us, so and level two engage is a good way to get a free yeah. couple of kills. Right now, Ash is just last hitting all the minions. That way, Jin and Thresh have to walk up. Yep. Setting up a good gank for Graves for whenever he does decide to come bot. But right now, he's just clearing his rafters. On to Min. Diana has a good chunk of wave to clear. Gets that cannon. Nicely done. Oh, bot lane. Ash gets hooked into a root. She pops oh, her heal. Goes half her health just like that. Yep, just with a auto. Yep. Auto and key W. We see Rise slowly poking down Diana. Ooh, Ryan takes a two tower shots there. That mm. is great That's news. That's actually a good trade. That is okay. amazing news. Here we have Garen with a really big wave, but that's understandable considering he can't really walk up to the Jace right now. For sure. So, so just for will... the people watching our side, our top laner is uh, Aiden Coil. Our jungle is Camden uh, West Sign. Mid laner, uh, Sawyer Boone. Uh, our ADC, Jacob Eisenbarth, and our support is Torsten Telford. Right now, Olaf is looking to invade the top side, but Graves already cleared it, so that's just a, a good time waster right there. Yes. Olaf popping his scanner, just, looking for vision. Yep. It's a good move on him just in case so he can try to steal some of his kind of minions in his jungle and kind of throw them off just a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> now we have oh, Thresh is playing aggressive, maybe looking for a hook here. Yeah, right now what they're doing, they're zoning off uh, the blue side right now, just so that they can farm up some extra gold and while cutting the other people off. Because the second they step up, they're going to be hooked. Again, another close one. Oh, Diana. Going in, taking a trade. It was actually pretty good. It was pretty Rise, hard. It cleared most of the wave. Yeah. She got some trade in and cleared wave at the same time, which is actually really nice. Let's take a look at top lane here, how things are going. Oh, do you see if you tab, does it show? Uh, okay, yeah. So that just shows this where we're right now. The, the little numbers in gold, that is the CS. And CS means creep score. So each minion that you kill, you get one CS. And that just kind of shows you... Uh, the amount of minions that they kill, the more minions you kill, the more kind of farm you get, which is your money for the game. Oh, right now, Thresh is actually roaming to bot, flashes and flays, misses hook, but Jin roots. 
That might be first uh, blood, and it first is. First blood, and Diana gets taken out while uh, the posting team also got red. Well, the got dragon. So that is, yeah. gives them a nice little infernal dragon. Gives them a four percent attack damage and ability power buff. Yeah, unfortunate for mid because mid. Oh, never mind. Diana's using teleport to catch this wave, which is really nice. Rise back here with first blood gets lost chapter, which is a really good power spike for him. Graves uh, looking for a here. top end gank. Is it? Let's see. Oh, oh no, we have Rise top looking top for a top. teleport, leaving a flash and an ult from Garen, and what a kill! Oh, but looks like Rise has come out with the vengeance. We'll, oh. Rise will try going. to clean up here. Garen trying to turn it around. Well, unfortunately, for Graves to get away, which is, I mean, a one to one. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not great. But that rise. Well, is gonna be a power <clears> real quick. well, see, the thing is, I would say that's worth because Diana got a mid plate, so she just got 160 gold to herself, and she could be looking for a room to top lane to help out the Graves sure. with the Olaf and Rise. Okay, and here comes Olaf, and they're about to tower dive Graves and see how this works out for him. It's not looking good so far, but the tower. Actually, I, this could be looking good. Oh, Olaf with the Olaf flash. Passed away. That is honestly worth it for TNG. And Garen right now is just trying to decide Some what he wants to do. Good kiting from the graves. Definitely. That was a smart play. Not getting greedy for the kill because I didn't see what he died as well. So just keeping things nice and calm. But right now, the enemy team is now trying to take their blue buff. And here comes Garen. Graves, kill yeah. Olaf. Oh, but he one for one. That was worth because Graves did end up getting an assist, and Garen, he's just a powerhouse. The more kills he has, the more potential he gains. Keep an eye on Rise. He already has a 200 gold bounty. Let's see how that Yeah, goes. his farm is really good. 61 at 7 minutes. That's amazing right now. So he's looking Garen's good, but... It's kind of rough right now. That ain't his fault. He's playing these arranged. Yeah. He, he's going into lane bully. Two lane bullies clashing each other out. The thing is, Jace, like I said earlier, has the range on him, so... A lot more room to work with. Diana just has to play safe now. She is a little bit behind on gold now. Threshold. Overall, DuPont has a 2k gold lead. <coughs> Right now, our bot lane's playing a little a little back because they have six. Yep. So At level it, six, the enemy team is their ultimate, which makes them a lot more powerful. Your ultimate is your best. Scary. Graves just missing the ward with his Oracle lens. Here we have Thresh. Oh, Thresh oh, knows that Graves is there, so Olaf is going to invade. Thresh just misses that hook. Kind of rough on our bot uh, lanes tower. rotating. I think they're just gonna give. Yeah, the, yeah I they mean, give. They might mm. might have been able to win a three v two, but they would have lost, and that is no bueno. Oh, oh, a mid lane Diana. So we're getting hard hit. Yeah, I mean, that's. I want to say that's worth. Diana still has flash. Rise has no flash, but. So that's five minutes to work with there. Oh, Balling getting engaged oh. on. Nalus gets caught out pre-level six. Will Jen ulti kill him? Yes, it will. That is unfortunate for Thomas Nelson right now. Right now they just had to play safe and try to just farm their way back into it. Ash could look for maybe an all play here. Ooh, Good flash. flash. She's in a really dangerous situation. Yeah. Yep. Good move by that Thresh, though. That was just smart. Graves is ball in, just there to clear waves, not really looking for yep. an engage. He doesn't want to risk any more tower plates to be gone. That's just free gold. Garen was looking for a trade there, but the Jace's movement speed from his E is really insane. So it kind of counters his movement speed. Yeah. Because, like, Garen's known for chasing <clears throat> people, but he can't chase whenever they can run away just as fast. In a way, Jace's um, hammer form, or melee, can also knock back Garen, which could potentially be a counter if used correctly. 
So you, Garen just has to play smart because the second he gets low, he can't even do anything. Okay, Garen's looking for a trade. Good Q. Ah, uh, his E was just out of range. It's unlucky. Jarrison might look for a couple pokes here. Or Jace, not Garen. Yeah, there's the E that I was talking about. Yep. And then each time he runs up, he's just going to get free autos on Garen, which kind of sucks for Garen. But sometimes you got to gotta deal with it and try to fight the verse. I mean, Garen's just playing from behind right now. That's fine. Right now, they're just giving the early Drakes. They kind of have yep. to. Olaf has some really early influence. And not only that, but their bot lane also has that early pressure with Jin Thresh. And that was but... Mountain Drake. And that gives them more armor and magic resist, correct? Yeah. Six percent armor and magic resist. Yeah, that's a lot. That is uh that is really beneficial. Like Rise and Olaf are engaging on graves, but Garen's rotating down. I think they will back off here. Yeah, they will. Garen's gotta be careful for the tower dive. It could be a possible threat. Look, Diana is roaming up. Maybe they're going to get a pick. Right now, Ooh. Rise doesn't see that vision. Doesn't yeah, I think clue. Rise is over saying. Is and Rise doesn't off? have flash. This could be good for them, actually. Oh, Diana, Diana with the old Garen ult. Really oh, good. Great play, great play. And that also gave them the gold. Gave Garen the gold. And that just gave Garen 600 gold because he got the shutdown. And when champions die, they give 300 gold. Unless they're really far behind, then they'll start giving you 20 gold. And there's the bot lane. They are being engaged on right now because they are low gen. Just ulti, but Nautilus is securely... Helping them to escape. Yeah. Oh, look, we have a fight going on in the top jungle. And Diana gets slain. But will Graves be able to stop it? Oh, oh no. That was close. That was a yeah. double kill for Olaf. Which what items did you have? Power. Uh, Iron Spike Chain Whip. Yeah, this item's really good on Olaf. It just allows him to lifesteal and lifesteal over and over again. It's really insane. Yeah, Olaf look, looking he's so low and he's still able to fight. Yeah, like, Olaf's looking for the Herald here. He might pop in mid, get that mid tower, or he yeah, might pop in top. Rumming up on Garen again. Well, he's sitting in the jungle, might be taking blue buff. Yeah, mm. it looks like he's taking blue buff. Right now, so the 600 like... gold. I don't think Garen backed with it yet. He might have, but... Right now, Graves is having a hard game. So the other enemy team keeps on invading the jungle, so he's getting no farm. He keeps on getting picked off, but it's not even his fault. Other I mean, right he's still only far farm down, and he has his mythic item. True. So, great, in my opinion. O Olaf's ahead, don't get me wrong, but item-wise and CS-wise, not really. Actually, no, item-wise, yes, because he has gold on him. But I mean, CS, he's not really ahead. Garen just flashed to get it some free hits on Jace. Was the flash worth it? I'm not sure, because the flash Maybe is pretty important. Way to get out. Okay. See, like, now he can't do anything. I have Garen looking for a train. And then a fight around <coughs> Rumba about to begin, maybe? We'll see. Maybe, oh, oh Thresh Ash, landing a hook on Ash, Ash is really bad. Ash is gone. No, Ash does have Nautilus with her, maybe. No. <laughs> just, uh, just all the CC that the enemy team... Oh, good ult by the Diana. Olaf, Olaf will die dead. here. Graves coming in from behind, That's flanking, killing Graves the Thresh. Maybe Graves will get his ultimate, so he can kill the Thresh here. Looking Good for a Q, play. they can potentially turn this Marlis, around on the Jin. Marlis better back, or else he's dead. He's playing with fire right now. All right, now it's worth it. I mean, yeah, that's actually like a really good fight created by the Diana. Diana was able to get a big oh, shutdown. Uh, unfortunate. That Rise is just so powerful. Yeah, Rise is very scary. Rise Q flashing and getting the auto attack, allowing him to kill the Nautilus. Right now, Jin and Rise are looking to maybe kill the Ash. Ooh, what a dodge. Can he? One more he dodge. dodge this one? Oh, oh, unfortunate. Good. Diana will end up going on the Rise, killing what the Rise, play. flashing towards the Jin. She. Oh, uh, unfortunate. Jin flashing. Jin flash with that four shot. I mean, Actually, he killed her. Diana. Oh, really? 
Yeah, he just flash queued. That is that's a rough way to go out. Right now, Thomas Nelson being behind, but like I said earlier, late game is very scary for DuPont Manual here because of the Wombo that they have. Nautilus looking to clear or maybe get some vision down in his jungle. But unfortunately, that will cost him his life due to Thresh. Here we have Garen looking to trade. Garen could have ulted, but Jace knocked him back. He does have to be careful. The Graves is coming up on him. Will Graves be able to? Ooh, that's slow, but it looks like... Graves did have his ult. He could have looked yes. for an ult there and for a kill, but he was unsure where his team is. Rise where is his enemy team. up on that top lane. It looks like our team's given up another Drake. Jace with that insane damage, but Garen with the ult, good, good kill. Job, Garen. Garen's just getting more and more powerful. He right now is looking like the best chance for the team's carry. Yeah. <clears throat> right now, I would say Diana and Graves would be the strongest. Uh, Ash, all she has to do is just farm, and then she can get back into this game. Olaf clearing his red buff like a jungler. You know, still up and farming. So right now, they, it is almost a 10k gold diff, but that could be closed by just beautiful team fights or good picks or just simply power farming and getting objectives. The game Which, isn't lost yet. There's still plenty of time. Yeah. Right now, it is a little difficult to grab these objectives of... Olaf, Ryze, and Jin being really ahead, but it is a Cloud Soul, so Olaf will gain on a, a pretty good amount of movement speed alongside with Jace and basically anyone who pops their ultimate. Got a doubt. Dan, right now it's looking like the underleveled of like Thomas Nelson right now just from XP is not looking too pretty for him. This is Ross is like three levels higher than that Ash. That's good. Right now, Garen realized that he was getting engaged on, so he just backed away. Oh, look, he scared Thresh from a Thresh lands the hook. Rise Thresh the lands the hook, but didn't go in on it. Two flails, so he did misplay there. Unless he just didn't want to go in because he didn't know where Thomas yep. Dustin is. Could be a possible case. Olaf being here now. Looking to clear vision, rise alongside with him. Diana and Jen, the bot lane. Can they get a pick here? Potentially. Thresh lands a hook on Nautilus, but I don't think they'll take that. Diana going in on Jen, doing a lot of damage. Ah, oh, she's but just gonna get kited now. Diana with a potential kill. Oh, can she? Oh, so close. Left at 117 health. Diana is actually having a pretty solid game based off how that Ryze is kind of controlling her lane just because the kills he's Right now, Garen with a Garen decent engage. I think he got hooked by Thresh. I'm not sure that what happened there. I don't think... There might have been a miscommunication there because it seems like he went and the other people were just kind of... Kind of stood there for a second. Maybe but Thomas Austin was communicating that... They were like they needed help defending mid, and Garrett tried to come help, but that will result in a Rift Herald for Dupont Manual. Right now, Thomas Nelson is hard for them to push up. Second, they get pushed up, they're going to be picked by this big yeah. Rift Herald will allow them to potentially get an inhibitor, or maybe just a tower mid, top, or bot. So it depends on where they place and how many people are going to be there. Let's look at items and how CS is going. Well, right now, DuPont Manual does have better CS. Ryze yeah, using Rise. his flasher. Ryze actually has perfect CS right now. Actually, Timothy, he has more than perfect CS. Yeah, perfect CS is considered 10 a minute, which right now he's at 212. He's at 11 a minute. That is... Crazy to think. That's really so. He could either be catching waves for the CS or taking his jungler's farm. But by the looks of it, 
I feel like he's just been taking blue buffs. Because over here on our side, he did take this blue buff. Giving him 4 CS. So that could be giving him that above perfect CS. He's pretty reliant on his... On his farm. Man. Yeah, right now, Rise is looking extremely strong with Ludens and Seraph Embrace. Olaf popping Rift Herald Bog. Garen in a bad position right now. If Jace yeah. decides to engage... They might not know he's there. They don't know he's there, and he was able oh, to just good. slip away. He it's huge been. for them, because now Garen can join the team fight from a different position. Can they stop the Rift War hits tower? Ah, yeah, really that nice. Was... Oh, Diana getting hooked. Will Dupont Manu engage on them? Garen engaging on the Olaf. Look at Nautilus charging at Jin up there to save. From... Wow. But it looks like they're going to let now, Seattle down. That there. Jace damage is really insane right now. Yeah. Olaf running under tower, taking a couple hard tower shots there. Right now, Diana does have ults, but sadly, she has 22 seconds until she is up. This will result in them getting Cloud Soul, as it is currently just sitting there in the darkness. That is Rise. Going to be very powerful for him. It's going to be really hard for Thomas Nelson here right now. Rise split pushing top, and as you can see, he's critting minions for 700 damage. That's a lot of damage. And it's 22 minutes in. Hey, okay, Graves, Diana. Diana, maybe to look for an engage right here. Mrs. Cuba still gets that E ult on. Graves following up, but wow, what is that damage? Wow. Jen coming in with the Q auto. Yeah, it comes out and cleans up the mess. Jen really scary right now. He has his fourth shot, and he does have two items sitting on him. Garen engaging, getting brooded. Oh, Ash caught. Ash getting caught absolute one shot. What was that? Okay, right now Jin's maybe caught out in between two towers. But now Graves is only tickling. He's gonna have flash. Right yeah, I mean, Graves is really behind right now considering they've just been perma invading him. So this is a pretty much... a pretty hard match right now. See them come back would be pretty sweet. Good I mean, dodge. I'm not it's over yet, but... It's not over. Any game is winnable. Oh yeah, without a doubt. It takes... Some one moment for the enemy team just to run it down. Rise might be looking... Oh, actually, they're looking for a Baron. I'm sure they shred it. Yep. Yeah, oh my. The health bar is just dropping. Dash being there. Renard team's yeah, made. I'm... It's there now. It's gone. They, they have to give it. They can't contest. Yeah, because their waves are all pushed in it. They do. They're just yeah. caught out. Yeah. The Rise from farm, he has 12 farm a minute. He is not letting up on that farm. Jin close behind, only 40 farm down. Right now, Jace might be 0 and 2, but he's still dealing a lot of damage. And that's insane considering he's not really in the game right now. Besides his items. Man, yeah. you know, Jace. Interesting. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, but I haven't really played Jace. What even is Shredbreaker? Oh, oh, Garen going in. Garen looking for an engage. Yeah. Diana not being there to follow up. Oh, Olaf flashing okay. in. Rise ulting in. It looks like Thomas Nelson mm. is about to just be deleted right off the map. This could be game here. Actually, this will be game here because the other team has Baron buff. Unless yep. Diana can get a really sweet ultimate in. Looking oh, for a three-man ult. Actually, four-man. I mean, but she did the best. isn't enough. She did the best she could. Diana, well played. But it looks like it's going to be the end of game one here. Which it oh. is a best of three. So we're keeping our hopes up. I know. First game goes to DuPont Manual. They're exchanging some GGs. So far, it seems like it's going to be an interesting day today. For sure. And the winner of this will go into the Play VS Finals. Which that match is set for Thursday, I believe. Yeah. I think I have to yeah, just exit pretty much. Oh.
and here's the stat, so okay, <laughs> rip. <laughs> oh, no! It's fine. Uh, right now, oh. we're just, I guess we're just waiting till the invite. There we go. Got the invite. I'm going to spectators instantly. We're getting ready for game number two. Both teams already automatically in. All right. They were probably waiting on us. Let's see. Here we have the ranks on the right, ranks on the left. They do have a diamond four, plot four, gold one, plot four, gold one. And oh, our team is go. composed of gold four, gold fours, silvers, silver and silver. So here we in. Here we're going to draft phase two game or draft phase for game two. Both teams going off, still banning the same champions that they did last time. Zach or Nakali. Maybe could be a LeBlanc right here. LeBlanc. And a lot of mains like um uh, Obians, I don't even know what to say is gamer type of mains. I've been like Echo and Zach, pretty dangerous picks, and they're banning them straight away. And then, of course, the Forge God's Orn is going to be banned. Of course, they have to ban the Forge God because if not, it will be a GG. Yes. But you mentioned Oban, the jungler, plays a nasty Echo, but Sawyer also plays a nasty Echo. Echo can be played. Ooh. Oh, and they choose Graves. They steal the Graves pick. I was not expecting that. I was maybe expecting another Olaf pick here. Oh, we wait, they banned Olaf. Olaf. Okay, yep. well, Last I guess they Olaf. decided to take the Graves for themselves. So far, it looks like their jungler likes playing them early junglers. He does. With that pressure. Other than Kindred, of course. The Forge God being Aiden locks in the Malphi. Now, Malphi could go tank or AP. Either way, his ultimate will one-shot you. Malphi is probably one of the most broken champs right now for top lane. Oh, yeah. His, if he goes, like, his ultimate, and just one shot your entire back line if you're not careful. So right now, Thomas Nelson's on the right side. They will be red team this game. And DuPont Manuel will be on the left side, blue team. It looks like another Diana pick. I felt like the Diana pick last game was rather strong. One of their better... Outcomes is just something Gage's Diana was in. Diana did land some really good ultimates. So, if Diana can just do that again this game, it will be looking kind of good. They do have a better Wombo combo with the Malphi Diana. So, they can have Malphi ult into Diana ult or Diana ult into Malphi ult. Let's see who DuPont's last pick is going to be before we have to go back into banning phase. They're waiting for the last second. The Oriana, Oriana. in the mid lane. That is also a very dangerous mid laner. Oriana is similar to Rise, except she she has a lot more early damage and pressure. And in my opinion, is a good matchup into Diana because she can poke Diana out of lane. But if Diana does end up engaging on Oriana, it could be scary. If Fiddlesticks is nearby. DuPont Manual also locking in the Fiora into Malphite. I'm not really sure how that could be. Gotta Maybe ban. Fiora can parry Malphite's ult or just her Qs. Or his Qs. Could be an interesting 1v1 top lane. I, I like the choice of the Fiddlesticks. The Fiddlesticks ultimate out of the jungle is... Very, it can make you jump. Very good. I mean, just hearing the noise from Fiddlesticks just means at least one of you is going to die. <laughs> Definitely. He likes to throw a party, don't he? Of course. Especially with Surprise Party Fiddle. That is a beautiful skin. It's very clean. Alright, here we go. Last two picks for each team. With the last of the bands being Morgana and Kaisa from Thomas Nelson, and then Swain and Leona from DuPont. And DuPont, looks like they focus uh, our support, Walfenheim, aka Torsten, there at the end. What Both teams having happen? Ezreal. That's actually a really Whoa. good pick with the Oriana because if Oriana ults and the ADC would get caught up in it, 
it would pretty much mean the end. But Ezreal can EOA having that second flash on hand for that Oriole. I wonder who convinced Kai to let them play Ezreal. This is true. <laughs> the Ophelios Braum. Now, Ophelios hasn't really been played much this season just because he's really hard and I don't think he's in the meta. But I could be wrong. I still like a, a good Braum support. Braum support is always awesome. Now because he can just literally tank anything that gets thrown at him. Now, Brahm's a Chad, don't get me wrong, but Rakan's chatter. I mean, look at that player icon. <laughs> and R Rakan is, he can be a very annoying support if played correctly, which, which I'm sure Waffleheimer will do that at the greatest of his ability. So, DuPont Manuel having a good Wamba, but in my opinion, Thomas Nelson has the even greater combo. With the Malphite ult into Diana, into Fiddlesticks, or just them three at once. With the Ezra ult and Rakan ult, or W, they have so much potential on that team. Okay, I want to keep it real with you. Thomas Nelson is going to have to do their best to either stay, stay close to the goal, whether that is farming, keeping close to the farm, which I know is very hard to do, especially with how DuPont's been later did, but or just getting the early lead with kills. Yeah, right now, Thomas Nelson being the underdogs just simply offer their ranks, but I don't know. Last game, it was pretty scary. Diana had really good game. ultimates. Garen was doing phenomenal in the top lane. Garen did flex his, his skills up there in top lane. He's a very broken champ. Yeah. Right now they have, let's see, Ori ult into Aphelios ult, so that could be good, especially if Aphelios has either Chakras or Flamethrowers. Could right, be a scary we... combo. Yes, so we have a, a two-minute delay so that the game can go to start, so that we can obviously see the game while it's happening live, or else we can tell, like, in a way, cheat, but we'll never do that. But So, with this two-minute cooldown, uh, ODSC, what do you think was, like, one of the most game-changing plays of, like, last, of the last match. Like, what do you think had the most influence? I mean, for me, it was, the honestly, the Thresh. The Thresh played a huge part on their team last game, landing constant hooks and his team always being extremely ready to engage on that. I would say it had to definitely be for me way how they starved out our jungler where he couldn't even push up into the river to get objectives. Which just just suppressing our graves was a very smart move on them. Graves the is a scary jungler, so he they is. probably were thinking if Graves gets ahead or gets a chance to so make any plays in any lane, it could be game. He's just one of those champs that has the power to 1v5. This 1v10 is true. Even. 1v9 or whatever. I uh, don't know. 1v10. <laughs> so we have about another minute until the game will start loading in for us here. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very interested in this top lane right now because Fiora being a really good 1v1 champion, um, she's really mechanical and technical and Pretty hard, honestly. Moth so. White's just gonna, gonna have to poke her down to the best of his ability. Moth White's just gonna have to press Q, win lane, yeah. win game. Doesn't uh, Fiora have a parry, though? Fiora has a parry, but keep in mind, it is a pretty good cooldown. That roughly around like 12 seconds, maybe even 13. So. And she doesn't max it out first, so it will stay like that Her, until she gets ability haste to speed up that cooldown. Without a doubt. So here we're getting into the game and just right now, actually. My cool wallpaper. It's a lovely the wallpaper. Same colors yeah. as mine. I also have the black and red wallpaper in the background. <laughs> All right. Oh, here we okay. Let's check if any of them have masteries. Okay, this time around, they actually don't have any masteries, and we have a good 
number of masteries with a six, seven, and five. But I mean, yet again, mastery doesn't really mean anything too much unless it's a difficult champion. I agree. Yes. Like, cause even like whenever they don't have a master, you have no clue how much that person played that champion. Yeah. No clue. Dark Star Oriana. That is probably Dark Star Oriana is her best skin, hands down. I I like like the the dark blues and deep looking purples, kind of like the mixture of that. I don't know. This always just been kind of my favorite looking skins. Battle Professor Gray is also a really good skin, but Surprise Party Fiddle, that is you can't the go best wrong skin. with it. You know, you can't go wrong. Is with Surprise the Party best. Fiddle. I mean, like, look at that. It's kind of Chad. And then Jacob already see the simple sweeper down there flexing his prestige Ezreal skin. I don't know how he was able to play Ezreal. I don't know. If you ever hear the conversations between Coach Kai and Jacob. He can't even say the word Ezreal around them. <laughs> but he does play good Ezreal. We cannot sleep on it. Kai giving us some, giving the team and giving us some love in the chat, saying, let's go, boys. Keep it up. Let's see. I mean, morale with that team, morale hardly ever gets low with that group of five. They've been playing ever since quarantine hit like a truck. So. Oh, yeah. Since March, this team has been playing together. Even then, we, we still played. Yeah, even before. <laughs> but, like, since quarantine hit, some people couldn't get off their computers. I'm not going to say who, but... Me. <laughs> or basically everyone. A lot of people, yeah. For me, it was bad for a while. But, I mean, we're not the only school. I mean, I'm sure that's what happened to DuPont as well. Their team's probably been playing together for a long time. This is being Thomas Nelson's first season with this team right here, and they've already made it to the semifinals. That's, like, extremely phenomenal. The potential for this group of five individuals in the coming years is insane. See, last year's team was completely different. They were 0-6, a uh, completely different starting lineup other than Sawyer Boone, and Torsten probably got in there a couple times. But now... Everyone else is brand spanking new, and they have turned Thomas and Nelson they... Gaming to something to be reckoned with. Finished the season, what, 13-3? and three? No idea. I'm pretty sure it was 13-3. and three. I know that we, I'm really yeah, I'm, I'm like 80% positive. But yeah, that is a great turnaround. Good job of Coach Kai and Coach, uh, Coach Russ. Uh, Russ Selford, he is also the main reason why the season got to happen this year, so shout out to him. He's big Chad. Okay, I'm not going to lie, that Ezreal skin is super nice as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're into the game here. Everyone having uh, 2,500 gold. Yep. Pretty nice lump of money, wouldn't you say? Thanks. If only I could have that just for myself starting out. <laughs> All right. All Looks right. like it's not the one to load right now. Uh, well. There uh, we go. Ah, uh, yes. All righty. Let's oh. watch the map load in. Again, DuPont is the blue side and Thomas Nelson oh. is the red side. Oh, we have a, a pause here. Maybe one of the PCs crashed actually they said our top ill top gap true rock diff report true i respect so the game has been paused here uh, uh okay so their top laner had disconnected okay okay and now the top laner had just reconnected thank you league of legends league of legends does have an iffy client sometimes iffy no 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 Bad client. <laughs> Very inconsistent. The game's been around for like 10 years, something like that. It's 11. 11 now, yeah. So we're in preseason for season 11. Season 11 coming out in January. Alrighty. They're saying that they're all ready. The match should begin right right now. Alrighty. Perfect. She's the match right starting in. items with the free gold. She's person gets 500 each. 
Uh, blue team pinging the one invade, so they're going to do the same strategy as last game. Um, this time they have different champs, Braum, Fiora, Oriana. They have a whole different lineup right now, but same as our team. Diana uh, face checking. Uh, oh no. She didn't she expect it. it. Yep. Unfortunate. Flash. I'm surprised she didn't see them all running into the bush right there. Fine. I mean, who got first button? Graves did. I mean, that's not too bad. Fiddlesticks will have a harder time in the jungle, but that won't set back Diana at all because, well, Waze hasn't caught in. And no, we're on a. 500 gold. Right now, they're up ahead. But, you know, it's the beginning of the game. Still pretty good. Minions Nothing. spawning in right now. Diana did use Flash there, so she won't have Flash, and Oriana might take advantage of that. How strong is Oriana early game? I have no clue. I mean, level 2, when she gets her QW... Uh, she can start poking you out of lane very, very nicely. A good Ori player will always put the ball on the center to zone off the enemy champion from just getting farm. And again, if you're uh, just joining us, our top lane is Aiden Boyle. He's playing Malphite. He's also called the Forge God. Our jungler is Camden Westside. He is playing Fiddlesticks, and he just changed his name for 15 times, so now it's Opian, or whatever you want to say it. Um, our mid laner, Sawyer Boone, playing Diana yet again. His name is Chief Sawyer. Pretty clean, classic name. Gotta love it. Our ADC, the Simple Sweeper, which is Jacob Eisenbarth, playing Ezreal, which is probably his favorite champ in the game. I don't then, know. It is his favorite champ in the game. <laughs> without a doubt. And then Taurus and Teleport playing Ezra Khan as our support. Diana looking for a trade there, but Oriana getting the better of it. It's really hard for Diana to do, or to actually walk up for farm because of Ori's little orb right there. She's able to manipulate it just like that. Yep, and, and she doesn't have a flash. Yeah, so it could be very scary, but Oriana already using basically all of her mana. She might be running biscuits, but I am not sure. Should get she, on, like, she, she's on running biscuits. biscuits. Alright. So she so, will have mana for a good chunk. Fiddle, power farming, jungler. Very scary. Let's see what's going on bot lane here. Braum taking some poke. Very nicely. Top lane. Mawfi doing really good right now, but really low on mana. He's probably been spamming his Q. Which, Mawfi, yeah, see, they, they see it. Mawfi uses a lot of his abilities to farm, though. It actually did no damage. Oriana probably doesn't have enough mana to press her W, or if, maybe she just didn't want to. Diana can potentially look for a trade here, like she's doing right now, getting the better out of it, uh -oh. being away. That was not an even trade there. Oriana came out just a little bit higher there. She also has corrupting pots. That just Graves potentially game. looking for a gank here. That or he is rotating bot side. To get this scuttle, Fiddlesticks may be just giving the scuttle to Graves because Fiddle cannot really fight anyone early, especially a Graves. He has a long how, already. How Brom always pushes up the second, Graves is like in that area just in case Fiddle was to pop out. He's always there for support, and making sure that Fiddle is not near his own jump. I mean, either way, he's able to roam simply because Ezreal. Is just farming right now, like good yeah. Ezreal's. And so. their ways pushed in, so like he can move up freely as long as Athelios plays safe and doesn't Aphelios get or just caught had out. his Athelios having his Graviton right now creates that and pressure. Flamethrower. Yeah, flamethrower and Graviton. It's really deadly combo. Ooh, wait, let's go back at that. Malfi having a really good wave top lane, so if Fiora cannot fight him. <clears throat> Oriana backing right here. Drake's about to spawn. Diana maybe like looking for back. Drake is hopping straight on that Drake. They're not giving Fiddle any time. And they're There's also and no vision. On, there's no vision. So the other team, they Thomas Nelson probably has no clue that they're doing this right now. No uh, vision around. 
Potentially, they could have a clue considering that Graves is a tiny bit ahead right now. And, um, and he is, is a lot earlier. That, that, that also is a possibility. Pretty solid indicator, especially whenever the Braum is well, dying. Now they for sure know. Yeah. So that was uh, Mountain Drake, so that just gives him more armor, more magic resist, makes him a little bit tankier. Yeah. Oh, Brian, the, oh, the, really good turn on by the Khan. Yeah, Braum got ignited. Wasn't enough to kill him, though, but it certainly gave them a scare. Philios using both his summoners there, and hopefully our bot laners can take advantage of that. I feel like this game is going just a tad bit slow right now. Less deaths, which is a little bit more boring on the commentating part, but that just means both teams are not willing to risk, especially with the finals in play. Well, our team will scale harder than theirs because they have a Graves, and Graves will start falling off eventually, and Fiddle will just keep getting stronger and stronger alongside Diana and Ezreal. And Malphi, too. Right now, Diana... Get that early is, lead. Diana has a solid... 20 farm versus Ori's 40, but... That's to be expected in that matchup. Ori versus Same Diana. Top lane as well. Fiora, do... Fiora does have the lane pressure right now. Mainly because she's just playing that champion in general. Diana looking for a trade on Ori ulti. Oh, oh does doing he have a help? lot of damage. She probably could have stayed in for a little bit longer. Maybe, but she did have to be careful with the tower range. That is true. Fiora just took a trade a there. Fiora, Fiora does have to be careful now, considering that Malphite has wave. a really huge wave. That menu wave just... Oh yeah, that menu damage. Now, that trade was really good for Malphite here. Malphi does have ult, so if Yora does play like that again, potential kill. If he keeps all those casters alive, Fiora cannot push up at all. She's hair playing a little bit back right now. Ooh, that Q has that so damage. much damage. Diana, Diana again. looking for a no, trade. That was a good, good attempt there. Think that was an even trade? Yeah, I'd say it was about even, even though Diana got hit a couple times. Graves tower diving the ball in. Graves flashing in, ulting. Ophelios yeah, ulting as well. Die. Double kill for Ophelios. He did use his chakrams there to place down a turret, which just laid waste to them. Both of them came out alive, sadly. Well, all three of them did. But they did use everything to kill those two. And our bot laners still have their sums, and they haven't hit six yet. So when that does happen, I don't know. Maybe Ezreal will get the double kill. Ezreal did get exhausted, and that literally makes him where he does no damage at all. Yeah. And he gets slowed. He can't run away. Exhaust is just brutal. Ooh, Malphite's oh. going in on Fiora. Malphite out Fiora there. trying to turn it around. Malphi not having ults, but still having his flash if he needs to. Good flash on him. Right away. Didn't allow Fiora to get that vital sign on her. He needs to be careful. He just needs to sit back and just regenerate some health. Oh, uh, he oh, could be cool. baiting for the fiddlesticks, actually. But do they know that fiddle is there? It looks like Phil is just going to go ahead and back off. She does. Back. She doesn't have a ward up, but she did suspect that fiddlesticks is there just on the way that Malphi was playing. They have, like, they just always know where Fiddle is. That is impressive. I mean, right now the jungler's heading to the top side, clearing some vision, if there is even vision. It was not. Clearing his blue buff. Pot gonna give it to the Oriana so she can stay in lane. Another bot lane going. Pretty good right now. Has you with dodge on Brahms Q. Let's look at the scoreboard here. Oh. Okay, Fiora went with the TMS so she can actually clear waves. She does struggle a bit on clearing waves, so goodbye on her part. Aphelios landing a Calibrum Q on Ezreal, allowing him to have Caitlyn ult range. <laughs> Real. 
They're right. Ooh, never mind. I thought Graves was about to start taking rift, but he backed off from it. He backed off. He Ezra with the engage, Fiddle following it up. Oh, Ezra ulting gets blocked by Braum. Sawyer TP down. This is actually a really good fight for them right now. Oh, yes. With the yeah. shutdown. Now they're chasing Braum. Can they get the double here? Oh, Graves is off. does have his W. Will he flash W for it? He will okay. not. And they back away, which is smart. Is Graves or Rihanna or Rihanna? They're ready down. to be there. That's really good. Diana getting the shutdown on Aphelios right there. That gives him two. That, that just gave him 550 gold right there, closing that CS gap. So Oriana no longer has that lead anymore. Oh, and looks like they're going to play for Drake. If, maybe a first strike unless Graves seals it. Graves could be looking oh, for a steal yeah. based off his positioning. Oriana could maybe yeah. ult. Oh, and he happened to steal it. No way. Hey, Graves does not have flash, though, so this will be a shutdown for Ezreal. That was still... I still feel like that's almost worth it for Graves there. Um, I mean, not really. Those Drakes, were, those Drakes played in, played huge last game, though. Not really. It is Infernal Soul, so this is really good for, honestly, both teams. But I... Me, personally, I would say that's more worth for Thomas Nelson right there. Diana... Yeah, Diana did get that shutdown bot lane, and if he, and Ezreal did get the shutdown on Graves just there. It's not the worst possibility. They still managed to kill him. He didn't get away for free. Taking a hit on his KDA. Malfi is taking some damage from Fiora. Okay, how does that Q hit, man? There goes Rakan just being an annoyance in lane. Sadly, Malphite cannot push up hardly at all. Fjord just used her parry. Again, Graves is straining out Fiddle's jungle yet again. Oh, Diana. Diana oh. Coming in with the ultimate. Does Fiddle have ultimate yet? <coughs> he There's does! There. Fiddle with a good ult! Gets the bomb and Graves away. in. And Braum, it looks like Braum's going to make it out of lab. No casualties. Other than from Thomas Nelson. Diana just went in just a little bit too early to where she was stuck there for a long time without any other teammates that help. Take a look at that again. Ezra rotating on, clearing the vision with Rakan. Diana started the ult. Aphelios is ready. Wait, he was in position. Fiddlesticks did have a good ult. Three people were in there. Oriana just fixing him to a position with her ultimate, forcing him to pop a stopwatch. Oriana getting a kill there. Aphelios with a Graviton just gets into range of Rakan there. Unfortunate for Thompson's. They got three of their champions really low. Let's go back to the present. Aphelios Braum getting this tower in bot lane. That is first tower, I believe. Yeah, that is first tower. Malphite right now. Health bar not looking too great. But he does have ultimate, so... Diana looking for an engage on the Ori. Ori forced to Diana. flash. Diana ease again. Diana going to get away. Fiora is on her way down, so... Okay. Diana with the insane down. shutdown. Really good for her. 650 gold. That makes Diana really strong right now. Diana being er, pull up, being really strong in this game right now will have some major influence in the late game with her ultimates. Looks like they're going to try to do Rift here for a second. Uh, Graves is still on their side of the jungle, so they play careful here. And here comes Braum. Uh, Fjord is also rotating down. Malphite. And Ezra are coming in. Rakan with the engage. Diana with the ult and Fiddle with the ult. Ezra ult just flew in too. Oh no. Malphite with the ult. Ezra's in there right now. Malphite's just going to CC. There you see it. Potentially turn this. Ooh, and that. One fortune. kill for Fiora. That is scary. So not sure of taking that. Rift was might have not been the best idea there, but I'm not in the game. I can't say nothing to be honest with you. It it pro no it probably was a good call, but we had I don't know actually. 
they, they didn't know that Graves was in the enemy's team jungle. Yeah. Um... Graves is just really strong early. And here they go, they place the rift. Of mid trying to crack open that mid tower, getting that pressure. Mid lane being the most important lane because it is a in, in the middle. There. Getting out engaging. Of Bombs low HP, rift tower goes down. Good job off fiddle by fearing it so they can hit the backside. It looks like are they gonna prepare for Drake? Nope, not yet. Maybe Braum is resetting right now. He's low HP. Graves also resetting. Oh, Diana just steals. The... That's funny. Diana will not let enemy team take their jungle. So respect. Now fight doing the best that he can to farm. And Drake is up. For Khan clearing some vision, rotating top side. So if they can catch up to Fiora maybe. But Fiora does have vision on the fiddle. And it looks like Thomas Nelson is not gonna contest that Drake. Here comes Fiddle. Ah, but he backs away. There we see it. Infernal Drake to DuPont Manual. <clears throat> Here we have Brahm just laying down some vision for his team. At the end of the day, that will be some extra gold for Rakan. Philios Brahm pushing bot sign, but they will be answered by Diana. <clears throat> Aphelios has to be careful here because Diana is insanely strong. So any opportunity that Diana gets with her team will be amazing. Right now we have Thomas Nelson rotating onto the Diana. Diana going in for that engage, like I said. Rakan and Ezreal linking up their ultimates. Fiddlesticks ulting high. in. Looks like Phil's not going to get any help here in this engage because Graves cut him off. Graves cut off the back line, sadly. If Graves was not there, that would have been a one fight. <coughs> Very hard to Thomas Nelson right now. Just that goal differential. 12k. Not right now, good. they're just simply, I think they're going to push out bot lane or actually they're going to push out bot and mid trying to get these towers, potential inhibs maybe. Actually, nope. They're coming up right now. Maybe they'll overstay and allow Thomas Nelson to pick up some kills and bounties here. Malphite might just need to give up, give up that tower to support his team. We're about to get two in his. But Malphite does not want to leave his top lane. Rakan going in. Dashing all the way back. And it looks like DuPont's going to back off here. They got what they wanted. Now there's just two open in his. The good thing is, they didn't get the inhib, so Thomas Elson won't have to deal with super minions. Right now, Baron is coming up in what seems like a minute. Maybe a minute 30. Actually, Braum a minute, has yeah. 100% KP, kill participation. Yeah, Braum has been pretty much everywhere. I don't know how he's gotten kill participation on Fiora. Maybe he was in the Rift World fight as well. Not really too sure on that part. So that diamond is showing up for his team today. Rakan carrying some vision. Fiddlesticks playing that red buff. Ezreal trying to look for some poke on that Braum. Alright, just... Just right now, Thomas Ellison is trying to farm, get the waves pushed back out so they can step up some, but well, it looks like DuPont, DuPont Manual with the instant Baron. They have tabs and all these cooldown timers today. Looks like Fiora just standing out there, emoting. 
kind of toxic. Maybe looking for an engage on the Rakan, but that's actually really hard because Rakan can just leave very easily. Yeah, just like that, he's gone. <laughs> he's very mobile. This looks like they're about to get mid inhib. Uh, they're rotating now for bot. To the is bot and him. Bonnet, some super ally minions for Dupont that are really <clears throat> strong and hard to take down. Right now, Dragon Soul, which would be Infernal Soul, is coming up in a minute. Rihanna looking for an engage with the ult. Diana also going in. Uh, Ezreal and Rakan going oh, in as well. Um, Followed up by the Fiddlesticks. Uh, and now, Amphilius Ultimate just. Well, if I got in there too. Collecting a kill and Diana also getting a kill here. They made DuPont pay for what they did. They Graves is really low control. right now. Looks like they're just going to zone them off where they can just take tower and maybe in the game. See Thomas I don't think they could in the DuPont. game here. We have Fiddle Six and Recon up in about two seconds. If they focus in here. They with uh oh. Looks like we're having a little freeze here. Oh, okay. Go. Well, let's set it back a tiny bit. So, last we saw Ezreal through a W. Oh. This is at the same spot. It's at the exact same spot. I don't know why. It's not me. It's the game, actually. Can I skip it ahead? Why everyone to wonder what happened? I can hear something. Aphelios crit. I'm pretty sure the client is just lagging. <laughs> but so far we have like Ezreal W, Aphelios Auto, I think. Can you like maybe if you go back a little bit? Yeah, I went back that. again. Uh, I I don't know why it's doing that. Again, League of Legends client, gotta love it. Oh, oh no, my. again. It made it a little bit further this time. I can tell the, the 97 crit auto. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know why the client's doing this right now. It's weird. It's actually not even progressing forward with the game. Oh? The game's progressing slower and slower. It's saying we're actually at, like, the final point of the game. Stopping at 21.44, but the Nexus is not destroyed for both teams. They're, they probably would have destroyed it, though. Slowly but surely. Uh, not really too sure what's going on right now. All, all I can tell is Ezreal has his W here. Di Diana... Getting hit. It's going slower and slower. Power just went down. Super minions, Baron buff. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I also don't know what happened to my client. Oh. <laughs> Well, there you go. DuPont rounds out the win there at the end, so they will move on to the finals on Thursday. Congratulations to them, but still have to give a good job to our boys, Thomas Nelson, for having a wonderful season, and it was great progress this year.